Robert the Bruce as you have never seen him before. In today's episode of the vlog, I'm talking about the brand new film starring Angus McFadden. That's coming right up after this. <laughs> Hello everybody, how are you doing and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. My name is Sean and I'm a YouTuber from Edinburgh in Scotland and in today's episode of the vlog we are reviewing and reacting to Robert the Bruce, the brand new film with a really, really awesome cast starring Braveheart actor Angus McFadden. This has been a love of labour spanning literally decades to bring this film to the screens and at the Edinburgh International Film Festival 2019 it is finally here it's a film that a lot of you guys have been waiting for a lot of fans of Angus a lot of fans of Scottish history and culture out there who have been waiting to see this film and I got to go to the premiere last night on the anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn right here in Edinburgh. It was an honour and a privilege to go there. I got to see the red carpet, I got to see the film and I went to the after party. But more about that in just a little second. I just want to say first of all thank you all so much for joining me in today's episode. It is great to have you all here as always. And listen, if you are new here, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button down in the bottom corner. Or else I'll have to send Robert the Bruce your way to sort you out. Great to have you on board. All right, okay, Robert the Bruce, my reaction and review to this film, continuing our Scottgasm theme right here on this channel. And if you don't know what that means, basically my viewers, you guys, came up with that phrase a long time ago because there was just a lot of attention on Scotland with Outlander, Outlaw King. We had Avengers filming in Edinburgh as well. Just a lot of international big hitter TV programs have been very successful covering Scotland and Scottish culture. Tourism here in Scotland is skyrocketing. There is so many people from around the world reconnecting with their Scottish roots and I think it's amazing, okay? Scottgasm and it continues with Robert the Bruce. And like I said last night, I was at the premiere, the worldwide premiere of Robert the Bruce here in Edinburgh, which headlined the Edinburgh International Film Festival over the weekend. Directed by Richie Gray from Australia, this film has literally been in the works from Angus McFadden, the star of the film, for over a decade. He co-wrote the script a very long time ago and it is those early scripts that he submitted after starring in Braveheart that have now become this film. Angus, by all accounts, has been wanting to keep this character, Robert the Bruce, alive and tell deeper stories about the man and his travels throughout Scotland, his adventures and his conquering that actually led to Scotland becoming a free nation independent of the British crown. It was men like Robert the Bruce and others like him that made that happen. But I think what Angus really wanted to do with this film is to tell a story that nobody else has ever told about Robert the Bruce. And it's a big wide cast starring a lot of really well-known figures. Zach McGowan, for example, he was one of the big co-stars of this. And by the way, I managed to meet up with Zach at the after party and let me tell you, he is such a cool dude. Thank you so much for playing this amazing Scottish character and doing such an amazing accent. It was, well thank you, I mean honestly, like that's been my biggest thing and if you guys like it, then I'm feeling good about it. Awesome, honestly, honestly. Pleasure to meet you as well, honestly. And by the way, I will be doing a premiere slash red carpet after party vlog coming up probably over the next couple of days to kind of show you that experience because it's the first time I've ever been on a red carpet. What a great experience that was. The film also stars Emma Kenny, Anna Hutchison, Jared Harris, who by the way, I was a massive fan of in his recent series with Chernobyl. That was just incredible to see him in that. And Daniel Portman off of Game of Thrones. To name just a few of the actors in this film. I will get into some of them as we go on with this review, right? But first of all, I should say, there will be spoilers in this review further down the line. Right now, there will be no spoilers, but there will be spoilers later on, and I will advise you as to when they are coming up. So don't worry, don't go anywhere just yet, but I will be later on discussing the plot lines and all that kind of stuff. Because first of all, I want to talk more generally about the film, how it came about, the actors, and what I really thought about how the whole thing just came together, all right? And I think the first thing that's really important to say, there's going to be a lot of people out there, and I was one of them early on, right? who are gonna be wanting to compare this film to Braveheart, okay? Because that was where we first really got introduced to Angus in this character as Robert the Bruce. And some people are gonna wrongly assume as well that because Angus is assuming his role as Robert the Bruce in this film, that it is actually a sequel. But the man himself will actually tell you that's not the way to look at this film. It would be wrong to think of it as such, okay? It's a continuation of the Robert the Bruce story, but not a sequel to Braveheart, despite some of the similarities that do exist with the film. For example, right, and I thought this was a really cool connection, they did have a couple of cast members from Braveheart in it, and one of them, Mary Calvi, 
she actually played the young girl in Braveheart who received the thistle from the young William Wallace, right? Very magical scene in Braveheart, the young girl getting that thistle and like kind of remembering that character. And she obviously grew up to become William Wallace's wife, right? So the actor that played that young girl is also briefly in this film. So there are connections, but it's not a sequel, okay? The next comparison a lot of people I think will try to make is with Outlaw King, the massive big production by Netflix, which was out very recently, filming at a very similar time to Robert the Bruce, the film was actually put together as well, which starred Chris Pine as Robert the Bruce. So interesting to have two films on the very same man, on the same topic, coming out within a year of each other, okay? But I think it would be very wrong as well to make that comparison because the two films could not be more different. I did talk in my review of the trailer, which you'll see on my channel as well if you've not seen it before, that it seemed from the trailer that perhaps this might be a smaller budget film, okay? And I think it's probably right to assume that, but listen, that doesn't mean anything whatsoever in terms of the quality of this film, the quality of the actors, the cast, the production, and actually how it looks on screen. It makes no relevance whatsoever, okay, as it turns out. And we've got to remember, this is Robert the Bruce, the story of the great man told in a way that we have never seen before. Let me get into that. Because while it is about Robert the Bruce, actually, what this story was to be about is the people of Scotland who fought, died and bled with Robert the Bruce. The simple people of Scotland, the people who farmed the land, the crofters, and a very awesome family, one particular family that we meet in this story, as well as the many clans who were vying for power and position within Scotland in those days, those who were loyal to like a Scottish independence type of movement, Robert the Bruce, and those who were loyal to the Crown of England. And this film really takes us through the journey of how Robert the Bruce went into hiding. He went on the run following a sequence of defeat in battle, losing a lot of men and losing some support, going on the run basically solo. And there's many kind of tales of folklore about the, those kind of missing years of Robert the Bruce in real life. There was a period spanning a number of years when he simply fell off the map. Nobody really knows exactly what happened to him, but there are a few stories of legend within that time period. Living among the clans, living among normal people, hiding in caves, these are the stories of legend about how Robert the Bruce, down and out apparently, coming back to being the King of Scotland, okay? And it's this story of Robert the Bruce in hiding over a number of years that, like, like I said, we don't really know that much about essentially, but that many other productions covering Robert the Bruce have never really told, it's always been skipped over. And it's that story that this film focuses down on and that is why it's so unique and a different perspective on the Robert the Bruce character. With a large price of gold on Robert the Bruce's head from the English crown, who would support him? Who would run away? Who would desert him? And who would actually seek to do him harm to catch him and hand him over to the crown in exchange for money and power? A lot of people, as it turns out. And that, in essence, is what this film is really about. Those clans, their loyalties, and how Scotland versus Scotland has always been a theme that we knew about here, but I've never really talked about. And this plays into modern politics as it does into Scottish history. We all think about Scotland and those wars with William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and all that kind of thing as something that is really in our history. But that infighting among Scottish clans and those who were loyal to the king and loyal to the Scottish independence movement, for example, has never really been told that well in these kind of hero stories of William Wallace. But it has reflections on today in modern politics in Scotland, for example, with the Scottish independence movement. It's not as clear cut as you would imagine. You would think Scotland independence, surely that's a simple concept that everybody would get behind. Well, it's not, right? It's very political, it's very mixed. There are a lot of feelings on lots of different sides of the matter. And like, as you would have saw in the last independence referendum, Scotland voted no to independence and preferred to stay with the UK. So loyalties are not as clear cut as you would imagine, all right? And that is what this film shows that that has always been the case in Scotland. It's not been a country that has always been united behind the idea of independence. And that is what this story really covers because like Angus said at the premiere last night, you'll not see a single Englishman insight in this film. The baddies, if you like, in all these other films have been the English King Edward. Those were the baddies, but not in this film because those people just simply did not come into the story whatsoever. Actually, what we saw, it was the rival clans jostling for position and power within Scotland that were the baddies and the goodies in this story. Who would support King Robert and who would be wanting the gold, the price that was on Robert's head that would have given them a lot of money and a lot of power? And essentially what we see is Robert, King Robert, spends his time in hiding with a family of crofters that live in a very secluded lifestyle in the Scottish Highlands. And the head woman of that household, played by Anna Hutchison, and three young children that are under her protection. This is my younger niece. That there's my boy. I shall leave here soon. 
You'll leave when you're well. So this story, this movie is about that family, okay? They were an everyday family that lived in the Scottish Highlands who had past experience of being involved in these battles because the husband, for example, of the Anna Hutchinson's character, who was called Morag, by the way, he had died fighting for independence many years before. They had a hard life, but they were an everyday family living in the Scottish Highlands, trying to eke out an existence on the land, right? Hunting, gathering berries and nuts and all that kind of stuff, and just really trying to survive the harsh winter. And that is also another aspect of this film. It is about a harsh winter surviving that harsh winter in Scotland. And what would this family then do when the villain of the story led by Zach McGowan came looking for Robert the Bruce. And you know what, throughout everything, it was this story of this family and the young children involved that really got me kind of like emotional and like, that is it. It's a human story of these people surviving in Scotland and doing what they say is the right thing to look after Robert the Bruce, despite the dangers that this would have caused them. Throughout this, you kind of build up a real deep sense of connection with those characters and that family, as well as the injured Robert the Bruce and the men that surround him as well. You know what, under Richie Gray's direction, I think what he tried to build up among the cast is a real kind of family community sense with everybody involved in this production. And it really comes through when you watch this movie that everybody, it just feels like a family. And then building that spirit, like you've just got a real kind of awesome gel between the characters that makes you really connect with them. You know what, I managed to catch up with Richie at the premiere last night at the after party and he's just such an awesome, nice guy. I really enjoyed chatting with him about the film and his, his role in bringing it together. And like, for me, one thing that stood out about Richie, despite the fact that he's not from Scotland, is that his passion for this story and wanting to make that come over to us on the screen in such a powerful way, it just kind of jumped out at me from him, right? He was just so enthusiastic about Scotland and our history, I loved that. And as I explained, his passion started with his love of the film Braveheart. He was a massive fan as a kid when it came out. And that really got him interested in the story of Scotland William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and all the rest of it. I'll get into a bit more detail on this as we get closer to the kind of spoilery part of this review later on, but let me just talk to you about a few of the individual performances that really kind of struck me throughout this production. And to be honest with you, there are actually too many for me to go through in a video like this, okay? This is my first reaction to this film, guys, as well. I've seen it once. It was highly emotional, so these are my first thoughts. Definitely notable in the story was Anna Hutchinson. As I said, the leading lady in this story was the head of that household that looked after Robert the Bruce. Just absolutely phenomenal how she told the story and how she kind of really pulled us into the family. Her words were really powerful, but she also narrated a lot of the whole story as well over the top of other things that were happening. So a very important lead character, and she's from Australia as well, did a great job with the Scottish accent. I, I need to talk about Scottish accents as well, but I'll get to that in a second, okay? I just want to talk as well about Angus McFadden, the leading man, right? We all knew him from Braveheart. How did he progress into this role many years later? And this character, this Robert the Bruce was a quiet, pensive Robert the Bruce character. One that we could see deep pain in. He showed us his pain because he'd been separated from his family, remember? He'd had his castle taken off him. He had lost his wife and his daughter. I almost got the, the sense from this Robert the Bruce character led by Angus that he really felt the weight of the Scottish crown on his head and shoulders, right? He felt the weight of what had happened, the momentous occasions where many, many young men and women in Scotland had died in those times fighting for the cause. And like, you could see it, that weighed down on him heavily. Big responsibility and, and asking simple people to fight, rise and stand up for you. And then many of them losing their lives is something that you could see just was not really comfortable with. You could see a man whose pride had been hurt, but he was also physically hurt as well. And I just love what Angus did to this character using so few words to get over those emotions. I think it was more of a presence than anything else, right? And in fact, it was actually the kids in that family that I was talking about who had a lot more words to say than he did, which I thought was interesting. Carney was the oldest of the three kids in that household. He had a big responsibility as like a kind of teenager who was coming of fighting age to protect everybody in that household. And then there was also two younger kids, a young boy and girl, as well as another girl from the village called Brianna, who was Carney's love interest. These were the true heroes of this story and they were all so good in their roles, all right? Last night at the after party, I met Brendan Lassard and he was such a really awesome dude as well, really cool guy. And learning about his story about how he came into this and learning the accent for the role. And I didn't know much about his work before, all right? And when I started speaking to him, I was shocked to know that he was actually American as well. And as were the two young kids who played alongside him in that household, they were all American and they all pulled off a Scottish accent very, very competently. And a lot is said about Scottish accents in these films. We've talked about Braveheart time and time again in regards to accents. There's something I've been thinking about in this regard, okay? 
who here has the right to claim the Scottish accent, okay? What is a Scottish accent? It's very difficult to pin down because here in Edinburgh and how I speak is very different from how people on the West Coast in Glasgow speak. It's almost like a different language entirely. And then in the North as well, people speak very differently. Basically, every single city here in Scotland, people speak differently. Even within each city, people have their own accents. And I've even had people from other parts of Scotland being critical of how I speak. Everybody has their own story about how they speak with a Scottish accent based on, you know, where they've lived. Like, I've spent a lot of time abroad, I lived in London, and that's why my accent is probably a bit softer. But nonetheless, what this tells us is there's many perceptions of what a Scottish accent should be. Nobody has a claim to what it actually is, right? So I think it is very wrong and badly judgmental of anybody to really go down the throats of actors for their accents. And I thought everybody involved in this did a very good job, okay? And especially those kids and lived in that household that I've been talking about, right? They were very young actors and they pulled off this accent really, really well considering the short amount of time they would have had with an accent coach to get this right. I'm really excited to see what they do with their careers in the future because I have no doubt we'll be seeing them again pretty soon. And you know what was pretty funny last night at the after party, running into Zach McGowan, he actually said to me, I was really curious to what Scottish people think of my accent. I think that's one thing a lot of actors might be conscious about, self-conscious, is the fact that they're portraying another accent from a different part of the world sometimes. And like, how are they doing? And I really thought they were really good, honestly. But let me just talk about Zach McGowan and his character for a second, because as I said, he was a villain of the story. He was one of the, the lead clan members who was actually related to this family because it was his brother that was married to Morag. But he was very much on the side of the British crown and wanting to get money for Robert the Bruce and he led a search party for Robert the Bruce. Not knowing that actually he was hidden right under his nose the whole time, right? He was really sinister throughout this, dark, mysterious, and also with a bad streak. A really great character, really, really well portrayed by Zack. I think another thing worth mentioning in regards to the acting throughout this is definitely the weather, okay? And that might seem strange, but it's definitely important to the story because it was a story of a harsh winter in Scotland. It's a story about one really, really bad winter in which the snow was deep. And I was actually surprised to learn that most of this film was shot in midwinter in Montana in the United States of America, which apparently is a very cold place in a lot of wilderness areas where the weather is a lot harsher than it is now in Scotland, for example. And I think they really film there because it's a much more reliable place to get that snowy weather, which to be honest, in Scotland, you have to be pretty lucky to get that snow and that weather, all right? It was really cold and snowy throughout this film, and as the director Richie says, they didn't use any studio shots in this. The whole thing was filmed on location, outdoors. And I sat there in the cinema watching the film, physically shaking, actually freezing, as the snow fell. They did this thing where they were capturing the noise of the snow falling down and like hitting the camera and like it just it felt cold you know and imagine the actors and apparently right they said throughout this that it was actually properly freezing as they were filming how they did that i don't know we're talking severe minus temperatures here and as luck would have it they filmed the scottish side of the story in glencoe during the beast from the east i don't know if you remember the beast from the east but it was a severe winter weather storm we had just over a year ago now i actually did a series on my youtube channel all about it right a severe winter weather storm that really, really had us crippled here in Scotland and that is when they were filming here. And actually it turned out really, really good for the storyline. But it is really impressive that they filmed in these freezing conditions and actually managed to pull it off without anyone suffering from severe hypothermia. Maybe they did. They spoke a lot in the premiere of how some of the actors like literally had blue lips during the production. So it must have been hard, right? Especially considering most of the actors, kids as well, were wearing essentially what looked like rags, time period costume as well. Not an easy thing to pull off. And that does take me onto the set, like I said, Montana, okay? Um, and that is one area where I think you could probably tell that this was a slightly smaller production, and that is because they shot a very small number of locations. Most of the filming was done in one or two locations, in Montana and in Scotland as well. They literally filmed in just a few places, which basically appeared time and time again throughout, okay? And like I said, most of that was in snowy Montana. And here's the thing that I find quite impressive, okay? While many of the other productions, big productions recently, have used like big famous Scottish castles for their production set, the only recognisable castle or structure that appeared in this film was briefly Eileen Donan Castle, right? But the rest of it was literally just out in, in nature. And I didn't know that it wasn't filmed in Scotland. I had no idea until they told us at the end that a lot of it was actually filmed in the wilds of Montana. And that really is impressive because like I said, they did film in Scotland as well in Glencoe and they would have had to marry those two settings together, Scotland and Montana. And I didn't notice watching the film that a lot of it wasn't filmed in Scotland. So I guess they chose that location specifically because it looked very much like the Highlands of Scotland. It was very generic filming location. Scottish Highland 
And like, whether it was Montana or Scotland, it all pretty much looked the same. And I would actually challenge you, if you watch this film, to come back and tell me down in the comments below if you could notice the points that were between Montana and between Scotland, because I literally couldn't tell, certainly in the first watch of this movie. Okay, so let's get into the guts of this review now. And this is where there might be some kind of storyline things that I talk about that you might consider to be spoilers. It's just really gonna be me talking about the storyline as it appeared, okay? And let me tell you something, from the moment that the opening scene came on and we saw text kind of given us an explainer as to the situation, the timing and all that kind of stuff, and with the music and the kind of drone shots of the Scotch Highlands, I had goosebumps, heavy goosebumps, okay? And those goosebumps and other emotions stayed with me throughout the entirety of watching this film. And as well as goosebumps, I had lots of moments of kind of like exhilaration and tense, stress moments as well. And that is really what the cinema is about, right? If you go to watch a film, you wanna have those emotions and those feelings. I thought it was absolutely genius of them, very clever to start this film with a very, very powerful scene involving Robert the Bruce and John Common. There's a look of war in your eyes. You really must learn to control your temper, Robert. If you know the history of this, you'll know that Robert the Bruce killed John Common at the altar in the Abbey down in Dumfrieshire, all right? That event led Robert the Bruce to being crowned the King of Scotland and also led to him becoming an outlaw in the eyes of the British crown. It led to him having to go onto the run. Huge moment in Scottish history. John Common, a nobleman who was loyal to the British crown and Robert the Bruce, they meet in this abbey in this opening scene, right? And what we get is just this absolutely incredible performance in this abbey because John Common was played by Jared Harris. And I didn't know much about Jared Harris before very recently when he appeared in the series Chernobyl, which I thought was absolutely sensational, mainly because of the acting of Jared Harris. He really brought that whole series to life. It was an incredible performance. Then to see him in this, as John Common was sensational as well. So powerful, those moments in that abbey. John Common discussing his loyalties and what he was gonna do if Robert the Bruce didn't come to heal. He was so powerful in delivering those lines. It was just such a good performance at the opening part of this movie. Meanwhile, Robert the Bruce said very little, actually almost nothing. All you could see was this kind of searing rage in his face that he was about to do something. It was such a great scene that appeared a couple of times throughout the film. And actually we learned very soon on that what we were watching was Morag, who I previously talked about, telling the story of how Robert the Bruce killed John Common to her son. It was a commentary that we were also getting as well. And that's how Anna Hutchinson, who played Morag, told us that story in a narration kind of format throughout this movie. Really, really loved that to open this film off. So Robert the Bruce essentially goes on the run afterwards, and that's when we get to meet the Black Douglas, okay? I've talked about the Black Douglas before very recently. Um, what a character in history. Played by Irishman Dermid Murtagh, who was in Vikings. Very, very good performance there of the Black Douglas. Like I said, you'll know my feelings on the Black Douglas. I have done research recently. I wanna see more about him. I wanna research myself and tell that story of the Black Douglas too. And a man who we've so seldom seen talked about on TV, in films, documentaries or whatever. And as I learned from the whole setup involved in this film, there might be an appetite to take forward this story in future. And I think it's one that absolutely needs to be told. So with 50 gold pieces being rewarded, for the head of Robert the Bruce. Who would stay loyal? Who would bail? Who would turn against him? Robert the Bruce, we see a man who's in hiding, down and out, after people start fighting literally over his head. He finds himself coming into conflict with his clan members as he's on the run, right? He fights on, gets severely injured, and makes it into a cave where he goes into hiding. And that's where I say, thank goodness, we had the cave moment the spider in the cave. A lot of people might not know the significance of the spider in the cave, but in Scottish history, it is very, very significant, that moment. It's on our Scottish banknotes, for goodness sake. It is a tale of legend, right? Basically, Robert the Bruce, hiding in this cave, down and out, ready to be defeated, saw the spider in the cave trying and failing to weave its web seven times, only making it on the last attempt. And that is what inspired Robert the Bruce, as legend has it, to push on actually and start fighting again. So he sees this, he makes it out the cave and he's on his way, right? But he is badly injured and he collapses. And that is where we come into contact with that family, that young family led by Morag, who take him into their house, into their croft, to help him recover. And that's when we get into this big story of Robert the Bruce recovering with his family, getting into family life and the dynamics with the other kids, learning about them, teaching them stuff. This amazing tale of compassion and love and kindness as well towards the movement of Scottish independence from Morag. Her desire for it 
after her husband fell for that cause, fighting for Robert the Bruce himself. She truly believed in it, and she was trying to instill that in the kids who were with her. And what this film really tries to do is fill in that gap, that story, of what happened to Robert the Bruce in those years where he disappeared off the face of the earth. Nobody knew really what happened in that time period, other than that he was in hiding, okay? He needed to be in hiding. This film attempts to plug that gap. I mean, literally, some people say he stayed in Northern Ireland, some say he was on the Isle of Arran, but nobody really knows, so, to actually come up with a concept, a story of where he went during that time is very clever and is fair game in terms of history. But eventually that would lead him to conflict because Zach McGowan's character and the clansmen who were after him were also related to that family. And once he found out they were hiding Robert the Bruce, oh they were mad. But we all know what happens next because he overcomes all the obstacles, he makes it back out fighting, he finds his men, he finds a Black Douglas. He finds Angus MacDonald, and then Scotland eventually goes on to fight at the Battle of Bannockburn, and eventually wins its independence under Robert the Bruce. That's what history tells us, so we know where that goes, okay? We briefly get to meet Angus MacDonald towards the end as well, who is played by Daniel Portman off Game of Thrones. And the rest, as they say, is literally history. Robert the Bruce leads Scotland to independence, although that is not what makes up this particular film. Guys, like I said, this film got me really emotional. It was a story of Robert the Bruce in a way we've never seen before, in a way we've never been told before. I think the real genius is they really put us in that place, in that croft, the freezing cold elements, the snow hitting us in the face, I could feel it. And then at the end, there was a bit of a surprise for us as the closing credits came on, there was a song that was a kind of title song of this movie by a Scottish legendary singer, Lulu. It was a great, very moving song, which I'm actually playing in the background right now, as you can hear. Um, it was kind of a little bit weird in one sense in that it kind of felt like, to me, it was a Bond song, right? You know those songs at the end of James Bond, usually sang by the likes of Adele or someone, it kind of felt like that, rather than the very old traditional Scottish types of songs. But it was very good and very moving as well. So I think in my conclusion, it is a very good film. I enjoyed it a lot. If I had a criticism, it is kind of long to be honest, but there was a lot of story to be told within that, right? A lot of deep story and character building. And like with other movies of this genre recently, we haven't actually got to the Battle of Bannockburn. So I think there is definitely scope and an appetite among people involved in this to actually take this forward to be a bit of a franchise covering Robert the Bruce, the Black Douglas, as to what they did next, because what they did next was truly heroic, as we know. I'm not a professional film critic, as I said, but I'm gonna give this a rating, okay? 4.2 stars out of five. You guys will get to see it eventually, but it's gonna be staggered, it's gonna be slow. A lot of people don't realize this. Braveheart, I didn't know this as well. Braveheart was actually staggered as well. It was released very sparsely at film festivals before it had this major release quite a lot down the line. So I think it's going to be very similar with this, right? It is going to be released here in Scotland initially, but I believe you will get to see it further afield as well in the very near future. I'll keep you updated about that and put any information down in the links below once I have it. Anyway guys, like I said, this is my first thoughts, my first reaction to this film. Like I just saw it last night, there was a lot of emotions involved, so I might need to see it again to kind of give it a, like a secondary thought, but yeah, I really liked it. It was great, great portrayal of a Robert the Bruce character that we have never seen before by Angus and team. And I would definitely urge you, please, to give it a shot at very least. Support this film, support the arts and filmmaking. I think it is vitally important that these stories are told and like just hats off to Angus, to the whole production team, the directors, the sponsors, all right? And the whole cast who have been involved in this, I take my hat off to them. I literally wish them all my best, my best wishes in this film being a massive, massive success. It's not gonna happen overnight because it has been released slowly, but I, I really, truly hope it, it gets the recognition it deserves and it goes on to win awards and all that kind of stuff, right? Thank you guys so much for sticking with me till the end. That was a long review, okay? I think this movie justified it. And like I said, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments as always. And until the next adventure, I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.